Hiya, Gordon back on the fourth and final uh, video on the Bible. Now, in the previous video we were talking about um, the loving God of the Bible, the God that uh, wants us to worship him um, and to love him. And I think if you've, if you've been following kind of my arguments, you'll have realised that um, the God of the Bible, that God that the Bible talks about, isn't somebody who really engenders himself um, to, to have love given. You know, I, I don't particularly feel drawn to love that particular God. Uh, you will. Um, but you know it gets worse, the story gets worse as you follow it along. And before I, before I get into that, I, I'd like to just to clear one thing up. I don't want to come across... I, I, I say all of these... These videos are very tongue-in-cheek, you know. Um, I don't want to come across as irreverent or as, as blasphemous or anything like that. It's... I actually have a really strong belief. My belief is not bound by the Bible. Okay? Um, it's just... The more I talk about the Bible, the more I think about it, the more ridiculous it seems. And, and nothing really seems to fit with what everybody says about God and then what you actually read. Take for example, okay, God had made the earth, he'd cocked it up, big time, okay? Uh, he'd blamed everybody else. And so he set into motion a plan um, of blame uh, with a view to it being putting itself right I suppose, yeah. He didn't want anything, don't want anything more to do with it. He couldn't even see it because it was imperfect. He couldn't see it. Now, I, I think that might be a little bit of a cop out. That might be just one of those God can't see imperfection. No, I'm not looking. No, I don't. Don't talk to me about it because I did it. Um, and so it got to the point on the earth when uh, all the nations had split up and and they were all worshiping different gods. Okay. And the God of the Bible was becoming more and more jealous and more and more upset. And this is this is a beautiful scripture, I think. This one kind of encapsulates everything that that God was. We got to the point where God was sorry for having made mankind in the first place. He was sorry for having made mankind. Now, is that something that you would want of your God? to be sorry for having made you? Would you like that for your parents? Your parents, imagine one parent, your parents says to you, or says to you one day, I'm sorry that you ever came on this earth. How would that make you feel? Loved? I think not. God is love? I think not. No. I think he was having a bit of a paddy, he was stamping his feet a little bit. I'm fed up with them, that's it. Okay. So what did he do? Well, he, um, he obviously woke up one morning and said, well, I'll tell you what, what could it do? What could it do? Something different, like wipe the minds clean and start again? No, no, no. He seemed to have a theme that he liked to follow, which was kill. I'd kill if in the event, in the event, if in doubt, wipe them out. That was God's, God's kind of um, uh, anthem, yeah? So he obviously woke up one morning and said, I've got a good idea. I'll just kill everybody. I'll kill everybody. And while I'm on, I'll kill all the animals as well. Uh, just like a fresh start, as Eddie Zard says, at the etch-a-sketch end of the world. Okay, we just let's get rid of them all. But I'll keep one family. I'll keep one family, Noah's family. I think Noah was the one, really. He was kind of the, the, the gods chosen again once more. His favourite. His family came along because, well, somebody had to shovel the shit out of the ark, otherwise Noah wouldn't have been able to do it on his own, and God couldn't have helped him because um, he probably would have been busy. Well, God can't see perfection, so if he can't see perfection, he certainly can't see shit. He probably looked at the ark and said, oh, there's nothing wrong with it. What are you complaining about? No, it's perfect. I can't see anything. Um, anyway, sidetracked. So... And Noah wasn't especially good, you know. I mean, he was a drunkard. He, he got drunk and took all his clothes off and ran around naked. Um, so he was a drunkard like Judge Rutherford was, one of the founders of the Jehovah's Witness organisation. Bit of a theme there, obviously. 
Uh, obviously, God doesn't mind drunkenness as long as you keep it to yourself. Okay. Um, now, my question is this. Was everybody on the earth bad? Like so bad that they had to be killed? Even the little babies? Even the little newborn babies before they'd even had the conditioning? What about all the other people who have been born into their faiths? And just by chance happened to be born into a pagan faith. They didn't know any different. They'd never had the opportunity to understand something different. It was their conditioning. Is that their fault? Well, if I can consider that, then I would expect a God who was all loving to be able to consider that as well. But no, kill them all. Kill them all. Um, even the animals. And frankly, I don't know that many animals that are just intrinsically bad. Animals kill, but normally, and, and 99 times out of 100 or more, they kill because they're going to eat what they kill. God didn't eat anything, I don't think. He did like the blood, didn't he? Uh, he was a big one on blood. But he killed the animals as well. He just kept two of each kind. Did that seem like the best idea? It, like, like It's like a really poor idea. Um, you know, and, and what about the fish? They weren't bothered. Rain, 40 days, 40 nights, get in, get in, love it, loving it, loving it, God. Get more of that, more of that, it, as much as you like. Okay, the birds, well, the birds, um, the they must have had a hard time. And we're flying, you know, 40 days and 40 nights, it rained, and then it took ages for the water to go down. So they must be going, oh, please, please. I'm absolutely knackered here. Well, that's the, the, the seagulls and things like that, albatrosses, they, they would have no problem. Um, but the, the non-floaty birds, the birds that couldn't float, they probably, after a few days, oh my God, I can't stand it, that's it. And they probably died. Uh, which fitted in with God's plan. So, could there not have been a better solution? Could God not have just said, well, what I'll do is I'll wipe the minds clean of everybody and I'll start again. Well, it's probably not guaranteed to do anything because God's restarts it always didn't work. He, he did the, the, the flood and it still went the shite, didn't it? Um, so obviously all God's plans um, haven't worked. They haven't worked. Um, but no, he didn't. Be, and you know what, what, what niggles me a little bit? is that when you talk about, well, why didn't God just wipe the minds clean? And all of these people go, oh, well, because, you see, it's all down to free will. Mankind has to have free will. Now, I, I, I've done this before. Free will? I'll wipe my bottom on your theory of free will. There is no free will where God is concerned and the Bible. Let me explain why. There's no free will. This is the option. Free will is this. You have a choice. Now, just picture yourself. You've got a choice. Do you want to live or do you want to die? That is not a choice. Because everyone will say, well, I've, I want to live. What have I got to do? I want to live. You've got to worship me. Okay? Um, of your own volition. Okay? Not because I'm telling you so, but because you want to. Or you're going to die. That's a bind. That's a bind. That's what a bind I use in hypnosis. You know, where would you like to go into trance? In this chair or that chair? The bottom line is you're going to go into trance. So when you ask somebody two two questions like that, you know, you know, um, how do you want to worship me? Dead or alive? Well, alive, please. There's no free will with God. The people of the Bible, the people who believe the Bible, are prisoners. There's no salvation without Jesus. If you don't believe in Jesus, you will not be saved. What kind of free will is that? That's not free will. The free will is to be able to say, actually, I choose not to. Is that all right? Yeah, okay, that's fine. You've got free will. That's free will. Free will isn't. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, you can choose not to believe him, but I'm going to kill you. Okay? And that's what the witnesses do. And that's what the witnesses have always done. Believe us, 
or die. Okay? Um, so as I was saying, I really do have a strong faith and I am not here to take anybody's faith away. That's not my intention. My intention is to help all the ex-Jehovah's Witnesses who have been tied to believe the Bible as though it were the Word of God. And what I hope that I've done is I hope that I've shown you that the Bible doesn't it doesn't meet up to the standards of being something from God. I tell you what it is in my belief. I believe that it's a book that has been made by man. Because when you read it, what you do read is the worst capacity of man. Not God. Man. And I think it was a very easy thing to do. To blame God for all the atrocities that man was committing. And isn't it strange that today the same pattern continues? You see the majority of us are good people. We are good people. And yet we're still surrounded by war, we're still surrounded by famine, by hate, violence, and yet the majority of us are good. How's that? Well, there's a small minority of people, and let's talk about the Christian world, who wield the Bible like a weapon, because the Bible has always been a weapon. And they use the Bible as an excuse to kill, to control, to damage. And they always will, until one day somebody actually decides to stop them. And maybe that might be the real being that runs the universe. Who knows? So if you believe the Bible and you've been upset by what I've said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're upset. However, I hope that at least I've given you something to think about. I hope that at least you've got some balance in your outlook. And if you already knew that the Bible was pretty cooky, and I've given you a laugh, then I'm even happier. Okay, I'll see you in my next videos. I don't know what the next one will be. I've got to have inspiration. Oh yes, I have. I, I do know what it is. I'm going to talk about something else, something that controls us as well. And that really does ex Jehovah's Witnesses no good whatsoever. I'll tell you about that later. Take care. I miss you all. Bye-bye.